Feeling a bit tedious sometimes, especially when you're working with large amount of objects in your scene. So today we are going to be taking a look at how we can make this process a little faster by using Arnold and some AI Flakes. So what is AI Flakes? AI Flake is another uh, utility node which Arnold provides and we are going to use it to create abstract shaders. So uh, let me just show you what my scene is and I have a simple geometry going on with a backdrop and some color palettes for my referencing. I got these color palettes from I think uh, let me see from colorhunt.com so if you like you can check them out and uh, I just have a sky doom light that's it. So let me switch back to my main camera and uh, let me just show you the Arnold's IPR. Let's bring this right around here. So let me switch back my camera. So as you can see, I have a simple scene with no shaded objects, just my simple floor and some geometry. So I'm going to stop this now and let's make this bigger. So I'm going to go to my hyper shade and uh, let's simply close this. I'm going to go to my hyper shade and in Arnold, I'm going to take a standard surface. Perfect. I'm going to call this, let's call this, I don't know, shader 1. Yeah, so I have weight, I'm going to make the weight to 1. You can make this 0 to 1. Uh, you can change your color and so on. But we are not going to be doing any of this. Actually, we are going to be taking AI flakes as a source of my color. So if I take my AI flex, as you can see, we have this small patterns uh, and we have some parameters as well. As you can see, we have scale, which is just the scale of your spheres, your polka dots kind of thing. If you scale this down, the dots will get smaller and bigger. So let's keep it right around here. And then you have the size, which basically means the size of uh, each and every sphere in this scene. So I'm going to keep this to 0.5 as a default value. And then we have normal randomize, which uh, kind of means uh, the opacity of your spheres. If you make this around one, you will have 100% opacity. If you make this like around 0.2, you will have a little bit of transparent kind of thing. So one, you have full transparency. Uh, you can say opaque. Uh, now you have transparency. So let's keep it around five as well. So maybe like six, 0.7 maybe. So if I attach this to my base color, as you can see now this AI flakes is blending with my standard surface, which is pretty interesting. And thus I have created a new object. So I'm going to make this object a shader, a little bit of, you can say plastic. So I'm going to make the roughness to around 0.34. Yes, somewhere around here. Yeah. So, uh, but there's one thing to keep in mind, as you can see, we have just a default purple color with our AI flicks, which we cannot change and we don't have any parameters for changing it. We cannot change it over here. We can change the color of your specular, but it's not going to matter. So how we can change the color of this flakes. So I'm going to take another note for that called as color correct. And I'm going to take this out color to the input of the AI color correct and out color to base color. So what I'm doing is basically taking my AI flakes to a color correct node, which will allow me to change the color of and some uh, random parameters like gamma, Q saturation, some contrast and channeling that same output to the input of my base color. So if I go to my AI, uh, AI color correct and change the hue, as you can see, I'm changing the color of this AI flakes. Right, I'm going to make this zero again. If I want, I can increase the saturation. I can increase the gamma. I'm going to make this zero. Uh, 0.5, I think it was one. And uh, let's keep this one as well. And I can increase some contrast as well. So we can use all these parameters to completely change overall look of your shaders so you can also take some color convert node if you like if you want to like change it from rgb to hsv so hue saturation value but i don't recommend this i highly recommend doing it with color correct so i'm going to keep the first shader as a purple shader so let's close this 
I'm going to select this and let's give the shader one. Right. So I'm going to hit six on my keyboard to turn on my texture. You can also hit over here and I'm getting some kind of error that why I'm getting this error. Alright, I'm still getting this in my IPR. So as long the IPR is working, it's good for me. So I'm going to close this tab again. Let's go to the hyper shade. Alright, so we're done with this. Uh, now I'm going to uh, you can say duplicate this. I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate the shader and right click on this graph network. So we have a simple shader or I can delete this and take another stand surface because we don't have the yeah output of that stand surface so just take another stand surface and uh, let's call this shader 2 take another ai flakes and now we will start to give a little bit of randomization so here i will take the size a little smaller let's select this first smaller and just a bigger dots with small scale and a little bit of darker pattern somewhere around here all right take another color correct node which should be right around i don't know here it has this it has this to the base color and i'm going to change the hue to somewhere around here all right this looks good so i'm going to close this again let's uh, give this torus shader to Let's go to the hyper shade and I'm going to create some multiple uh, you can say shaders just like this. So I'm going to control D this and graph network delete this. All right. So yes, let's call this shader three. Let's make the weight one. Let me just select uh, this as well. Make the weight one. Perfect. So going back over here, I'm going to take another one. Uh, let's make this actually a little bigger. Some boldy patterns and a little bit of variation. So what I can also do is uh, I can actually take this flake and I'm going to hit Control D to make a duplicate copy of it and i'm going to make the scale a little smaller somewhere around here and i can also attach this to base color as you can see or i can attach this but the cool part of arnold is i can actually multiply this or you can say add both of these flakes and get an output of the combined you can say colors so what i'm looking for is ai add so if i take out color input one and out color input two and if I just out color this to my base color, as you can see, I'm getting a randomized pattern of both of those patterns. So I'm getting bigger flakes as well and smaller flakes as well. Right, so I'm going to make uh, this one a little darker and the bigger one, I'm going to keep them around 0.6. So as you can see, we have the combination of both of them. So I'm going to bring this back just a little bit and let's take another color correct attach it over here attach it over here and simply change the hue how about this one nice so I think the patterns are too big yeah I think 10 is fine yeah so this was our shader 3, I'm going to give this to my cylinder. Right, so let's uh, actually go to my, all right, so we have another stand surface, go to graph network, let's call this shader 4, just an A there. And uh, do the same with this, let me just check if I made the weight 1, yeah. So I'm going to take another AI flex, make the out color, go to color correct, yes. attach this to your color correct, attach this to your base color and here simply change the hue. So I'm going to 
Uh, let's uh, disconnect this actually. So let's take a look around our flicks. So I'm going to make this bigger again. Yeah, and I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate this, and we are going to try another thing with this, uh, which is let's make this bigger, and which is um, you can say multiply. We are going to multiply this with an AI multiply. So it kind of works uh, similar to the addition. So Arnold is completely based on maths: addition, subtraction, multiply, divide, and so on. So I'm going to multiply both of these patterns together. So out color one, two, and there we go. So to the input and out color to the base color. So we have something like this, right? Uh, you can also attach one more color correct node to kind of give an extra variation or you can say blend those together even better. somewhere around here all right uh, or you can also do this i'm going to input around here and out color over here right so let's bring this back and out color over here so now i have this if i just disconnect this if i select this so the original pattern was a little bit of you can see purple right something like this and i changed it to somewhat like a greenish pattern kind of thing and now we are going to blend those together to another color correct node to make something like this so this is all about like as i said working with arnold is completely up to you as uh, this is your creative process to mess around with it so dive into it just play around with some nodes to get something out of it so this is what we are getting so we have shader 4 and i'm going to give this shade of four all right i guess we have some few patterns left so i'm going to turn on my ipr to see what's going on so uh, everything else is looking good uh, i think the overall sky dome light is a little brighter for our scene because as you can see the cylinder is kind of burning and i'm going to also change the i'm going to close this tab I'm going to go to my hyper shade and change the overall look for this shade of 4 because I don't think it's kind of matching so let's change a little bit of hue around here let's change a little bit of hue around here There's something like this and let's increase the saturation on this just a little bit yes so for the rest of the geometry i'm going to give a constant color flat color to it right let's bring this around here so i have this left this 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 all right so let's stop this again i'm going to close the tab uh, select this new material panel sand surface let's call this sheet of five and simply uh, i'm going to get out of my camera and I'm going to pick any color I want. So I'm going to go to my color and pick the eyedropper and select some random colors. Hit done and make the roughness to about 3.4, right? So we have around plastic. So we have to change the roughness value of every shader. Uh, the next thing is going to be probably shading our cube as well. So let's create a new material, Arnold, stand surface. Let's make the weight one and let's pick another color for this and make the roughness to 0.34. Okay, uh, I'm going to go back to my main camera, hit the IPR. So we have two more objects left. Uh, before that, I'm just going to make this one a little brighter, something like this. Okay, so I think everything else is looking good. So I'm going to close this tab. I'm going to create those two material as well. Before that, I'm just going to jump into my hyper shade and make sure the roughness value is set to the point three four zero, which is not for some shaders. Point three four, point three four, point three four. 
and we need this roughness value because as i said we are dealing with plastic material we are trying to create plastic material that's why we have this kind of thing going on uh all right so yeah so this one and this one right let's close this let's create a new material for this sand surface let's call this shader 7 all right i'm going to get out of my camera and weight one roughness to point three four and the color will be this one done and i'm going to give the same color to this either i can also give like shader six to this uh, stand surface six which i forgot to rename all right let's go back into our camera main let's hit ipr so as you can see we have this kind of scene going on so it's really nice how you can create some abstract scene with this i'm just going to pause this a little bit and concentrate on my floor so i have roughness value going on uh, one more thing make sure your test resolution is at 50 percent uh, so it just runs a pretty a little bit faster for this uh, i'm going to make this kind of like this nice uh, one more thing you can, since this was just for a demonstration purpose that's why i use the sky dome light but you can actually use some hdris for if you want to make a final result i'm going to use one hdri as a demonstration purpose so i'm just going to go into my main hit my ipr again let's pause this so this was my first result and i'm going to go to my outliner right here i'm going to select my sky dome light go to attribute and in the color select your um, file and browse your hdri so I've loaded my HDRI so as you can see we have this kind of result although I do have to increase my exposure to 0.2 value because the HDRI was a little bit of you can say underexposed so you can also increase the value to 0.5 if you want a brighter result right uh, I think 0.2 was working out good for me and also increase my samples to 5 so as you can see we have this kind of scene uh, but for the majority of this class the sky dome light was enough but yeah so for the final render settings if you are rendering this kind of abstract you can take the image format to jpeg uh, make the hd quality to 1080 so 1920 by 1080 and in the anal make sure your camera a sample is set to 8 diffuse to 4 circular 4 we don't have any transmission no subsurface scattering and in the ray depth make the transmission 0 and 2 so that's it, you're good to go, enjoy.